Lesson 9.1, Line Plots and Fractional Averages. A line plot is a graph that shows frequency of data along a number line. We place a mark above each number that represents data. So if we asked some people what kind of pets they had, and we thought they would have maybe lizards, birds, cats, dogs, or rabbits, and three said they had dogs, we would put three marks for the dogs. If two had birds, we would put two for the birds. If two had cats, we'd put two marks for the cats and one for the rabbit. We can actually leave lizard off because there aren't any. And we can easily see data or compare amounts. We can see that there's more dogs. An average, which is also called a mean, is the total sum of number values divided by the number of data. So, for pies Mrs. Kim bakes each day, if she makes seven on Monday, four on Tuesday, one on Wednesday, and eight on Thursday, we add up seven plus four plus one plus eight. We have four add-ins, four amounts of data that we added up, and they equal 20. We divide 20 by that number of data, the number of add-ins. That means she bakes an average of five pies a day. A line plot can help us find an average with data given in fractions. We can find how many times each fraction is recorded on the line plot, find the total amount for each fraction, then find the total amount for all. Then we can divide the total by the number of data recorded to find the average. So let's see how this works. Sophia has leftover fabric from completed sewing projects. Each remnant is a fraction of a yard. A little leftover piece of fabric is called a remnant. And the remnants in yards are one-fourth, three-fourths, another one-fourth, another three-fourths, a half, another half, another one-fourth, and a three-fourths. And what is the average length of her fabric remnants? So we think we can make a line plot to organize the data. We have one-fourth, so there's one, two, three of those, we put three marks above the one-fourth. For one-half, we have one, two of them. And for three-fourths, we have one, two, three of them, we put three marks. We put an X above each value to represent each of the eight remnants. Now we total each data amount. We've got three one-fourths, so that's one-fourth. There's three of them. For one-half, there's two, and for three-fourths, we have three of them. We do one-fourth times three, which is three-fourths. We do one-half times two, which is one whole, and three-fourths times three, which is nine-fourths, which simplifies to two and one-fourth. We had three-fourths, one, and two and one-fourth for our subtotals. We add them up. We have three-fourths and one-fourths makes four-fourths. We had a one and two for whole numbers, that's three and four-fourths, which is equal to four. And there were eight remnants that total four yards of fabric. We need to find the average length of her fabric pieces. We divide the total yards, the four, by the number of remnants, eight, and we can do four as a fraction as a four over one, divided by eight as a fraction as an eight over one. Then we can use multiplication by multiplying 4 over 1 times the reciprocal of 8 over 1 as its flipped upside down version, 1 eighth, and 4 times 1 is 4, and 1 times 8 is 8, we get 4 eighths. We can simplify it by dividing the numerator and denominator by the greatest common factor 4, we get 1 half yard average for the length of Sophia's remnants. We can use the order of operations to find the average length of Sophia's fabric remnants. Here were her remnants, and remember the order of operations tells us to do parentheses, then anything that's in brackets, then we do any exponents, then we multiply or divide from left to right, then we add or subtract from left to right, and we skip the steps that aren't in our equation. So in this case, there are no exponents, we're just going to skip this step. We start with the parentheses. We have three times one-fourth. 
we need to add it to 2 times 1 half, and we need to add that to 3 times 3 fourths. Once we do this multiplication, then add them, we need to take everything that's in the bracket and divide it by the 8 fabric remnants that she had. 3 times 1 fourth is 3 fourths, 2 times 1 half is 2 halves, and 3 times 3 fourths is 9 fourths. This is 3 fourths, this is 1 whole, and this is 2 and 1 fourth. We see that 3 fourths and 1 fourth can be added together to make a 1. Then we have another 1 that makes 2 whole, and 2 more makes 4 whole. Now we have 4 divided by 8. And we can just write the 4 as the numerator and the 8 as the denominator. Because fractions are division and 4 eighths is equal to 1 half yard average. We do what's in the parentheses first, then we do what's in the brackets, which is the addition part, and then we divided it by 8. Mr. Lee divides three two-pound bags of jelly beans into smaller bags. And the first bag is divided into bags weighing 1 eighth pound each, the second bag is divided into bags weighing one fourth pound each, and the third bag is divided into bags weighing one half pound each. So we have three separate bags that are each two pounds. We find the number of one eighth, one fourth, and one half pound bags. Then we graph the results on a line plot and we can write a title for the line plot. We can use division to find the number of bags. So the first bag, that was two pounds. It was split into one eighth pound smaller bags. We have two whole pounds divided by this denominator eight because it's a unit fraction. We could just do two times eight, which is 16 bags of one eighth pound. For the second bag, it was also two pounds divided into one fourth pound smaller bags. Because this is a unit fraction, we can just do the two whole pounds times the denominator 4, which gives us 8 bags of 1 fourth pound. And the third bag was also 2 pounds. It was divided into half pounds. And we can do 2 whole times the denominator 2, because it's a unit fraction. We get 2 times 2 is 4. That's 4 bags of half pound. On our line plot, we have 1 eighth, 1 fourth, and 1 half, because those are our increments. We title it weight of jelly beans and pounds. There were 16 of the 1 eighth ones, so we put 16 marks for the 1 eighth. There were 8 bags, smaller bags, of the 1 fourth pound, so we put 8 marks. And there were 4 bags of the half pound, so we put 4 marks. We can easily see that there were a lot of 1 eighth pound bags, and we can see that there weren't that many of the half pound. And this one is so much taller and has so many more marks because it's twice as many as the one fourth pound bags. That was 16, that was only eight. Bob kept track of the daily snowfall in inches for his town during 10 days. Graph the data on a line plot and find the daily average of snowfall in his town for the 10 days. So here's the amounts in inches that he wrote down. We can put them on a line plot. We can title it snowfall in inches. We start with a one-fourth. We can put a mark above the one-fourth. We have a one. We can put a mark above the one. We can even do this to show that we marked those. We have a one-half. We put a mark. We did that one. We have a one-whole. We did that one. We have a one-half again. We have a one-fourth. We have a three-fourths, we have a one, we have a one-fourth, and we have a one-half. Now we can easily see the numbers, and we can use the order of operations to help us find the average. We have three times one-fourth, we have three times one-half, we have one times three-fourths, and three times one. We need to divide all of this by 10, because it was 10 days, and 10 pieces of data, of information. And 3 times 1 fourth is 3 fourths. 
3 times 1 half is 3 halves, 1 times 3 fourths is 3 fourths, and 3 times 1 is 3. We start by doing in the parentheses first. Now we need to do what's in the brackets and add these together. We can make sure they have like denominators to add them. We have 3 fourths, 3 halves is the same thing as 1 and 2 fourths. That's 1 and a half, so we can write it as 1 and 2 fourths. We have our 3 fourths and we have 3 whole. And we can add all of these up and then divide it by 10. We add 3 fourths, 1 and 2 fourths, 3 fourths again, and a 3 whole. We get 4 and 8 fourths. We have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. For our numerator, we have 8 fourths. And 4 and 8 fourths is equal to a 4 plus a 4 fourths plus a 4 fourths. That means it's equal to 6 inches total. And it was in 10 days, so we're going to do 6 divided by 10. And we can just write a 6 over a 10 and then simplify it. Or we can write 6 as a fraction as 6 over 1 and write 10 as a fraction as a 10 over 1. So we have this 6 over 1 divided by a 10 over 1. Then we can divide by multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor. 10 is our divisor as a 10 over 1. We flip it around and make it a 1 tenth. Now we just do 6 times 1 is 6, and 1 times 10 is 10. We get 6 tenths. But see, we could have just said 6 divided by 10. 6, fraction bar is a division, and then 10. And it simplifies to 3 fifths. We can divide the numerator and denominator by 2 and get 3 fifths. We know that 3 fifths inch per day is the average of the snowfall. By organizing the given data into a line plot makes it easier to calculate the average in small steps. And this is very helpful when given fractional amounts, but works with decimals and whole numbers too. So remember, we find an average by finding a total of all the data, then we divide that total by the number of add-ins. So if the information that we have is a 3, a 2, a 5, a 4, a 2, and a 2, we have six pieces of information here. We add them all together, we get 18. And because there were six of them, we divide by six. That means for these numbers, the average is 3. Remember that fractions are division problems. 6 divided by 2 is the same thing as 6 halves, and it's equal to 3. 5 divided by 10 is the same thing as 5 tenths. That's equal to 1 half in its simplest form. And 4 divided by 7 is equal to 4 sevenths. We think of the fraction bar as a division sign. 4 divided by 7. So after we add all the data numbers to get a total and need to divide by the amount of add-ins to get the average, we can use the dividend as the numerator and we can use the divisor as the denominator. Our next lesson, 9.2, is going to be about ordered pairs with the x-coordinates and the y-coordinates. I hope I'll see you there. Stay healthy, stay safe. Bye.